Good evening and salutations, my Jade fans. I want to start off with the whole Spencer and Trina and Marshall scene because here's the thing. Initially, I felt like I was going to be kind of annoyed, right? You know, um, Spencer came to his door. He wants to sit there and take Trina onto the party. And Marshall's like, hey, come on in. We got to sit there and have a little chit chat or whatever. I'm like, Bro, you're not Trina's father. You need to just sit there and just take it down a notch, you know? Um, you know, Trina was like, come on, you know, we got to get ready to go, yada, yada, yada. And Marshall was like, no, 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 no. You got to go and collect your photos and stuff like that. Let me just have a sit. Let me just have a little word with him for a little bit. And right off the bat, I was going to be like, okay, um, as much as I don't like Spencer, I don't really understand <laughs> why you need to sit there and talk to her, talk to him. Like you're setting him down like he's taking your daughter out on a date or something. You need to just, again, take that a couple of notches down. But what I found out, I mean, what not really what I found out, but as I was watching the scene, there was parts I actually really enjoyed. To actually tell you the truth, there was a lot of parts I actually enjoyed. Specifically... The fact that Marshall was like, listen, I see that you're trying to put in effort. I see that you're just trying to be a better person. So don't beat yourself up. I can see all the hard work that you're, you're, you're putting into yourself as far as improving yourself and really trying to help out Trina and bring value, bring something to her life. So I was like, okay, cool. It wasn't, it wasn't going to be the total sideways show that I thought it was. Now, one thing that Marshall said, I sat there and I looked at it and I'm just like, this is the one key component on days of our lives when it comes towards Sarah and Sarah and, and Xander. Marshall was like, I see that you're trying to change and be a better person for your brother and Trina. But you have to sit there and start that from within. You have to be a better person for yourself before you are able to sit there and do that for somebody else. Because all those changes are not going to matter if it's not and if it's not going to be genuine. And I sat there and I looked at that and I'm like, you know, when people always sit there and try to romant romanticize Xander and, and Sarah, like, oh, I love it so much, and he really changed for her, and I'm just like. You people are a bunch of goddamn idiots. Like, really, really, in, in all reality. And I, I don't I don't sit there and try, you know, listen, I understand that people love those two as a couple and stuff. But when people roman romanticize the idea of him changing because of her love, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's so stupid. And I get it. It's a fantasy. So people, they don't really take real life context into their fantasy and I can I can respect that to some extent. But also it takes a certain level of I also give that a certain level of, of criticism because he never once changed because it was the right thing to do. And there was so many times that Sarah had to sit there and convince Santa to do the right thing. And the one thing that I don't want to sit there and see from these two is Trina Snitter they're trying to lead Spencer down a righteous path or, oh, I need you to do this because it's the right thing to do. Because I have to tell you the truth, that's just stupid and annoying. So I will sit there and give, as much as I love Days, I will give GH the credit for not making them like Xander and Sarah, making them better. Give him credit for that. So, they had their talk. And Trina did thank Marshall for, you know, because at first, you know, she was like, you know, what did you do? You know, you interrogated him and, you know, I'm going to talk to him. But she did thank him because he seemed like he was a lot more lighter and, same, and seemed like he gained, you know, a, a, a clearer perspective. From that talk. Like it was enlightening. So the scene wasn't. The scene was actually pretty good. The scene was good. So give him points for that. You know. When Liz told Laura. That she felt like she didn't really pay for the crimes that she did. 
and she was like, I practically got off scot-free. It made me laugh a little bit. It did. It made me laugh, and it almost felt like it was almost like this invisible middle finger to the people that were just like, wow, she couldn't even get a slap on her wrist for the stuff that she did? Like, yeah, she didn't want to get fired, okay? She didn't want to get fired. In all reality, I don't think in all hearts of heart people wanted her to get fired, but if she did get fired, then, well, you know, you made your bet. So it is what it is. But not only did she not get fired, she got praised. She got praise from the hospital. She got praise from Lit. I mean, from, from Laura. She just got praise. It was just like, yeah, you did a good job. And I, I, you know, I, um, what did she say? I'm proud of you. You did the right thing. And Nicholas, you know, backed you to the corner and stuff like that. That's all very true. Okay. But at some point, you are a grown adult. Okay. You, you know the difference between right and wrong. So, while Nicholas did kind of give, you know, put her in a very crappy position, she always had a choice to sit there doing the right thing or not. She chose not to do it. And so when Laura's like, I'm not, you're not, not disappointed in you and stuff like that. I'm proud of you. I'm just like, of course you are. I think at this point, Paul Charles is sit there and just throw Liz a parade for, for all the good that she did. All of it. All of it. Because that's literally what I'm sitting there feeling like in this whole scene. Of the last past couple of scenes. Um, yeah, so they talked about that and Nicholas and everything. And that, that pretty much was my take on it. Now let's get into the Victor stuff. Victor and Eileen. So he gets the coordinates. He's like, all right, you can, you can take back the necklace. You can keep it. Trying to be in the evidence. I don't, I don't really care. I'm trying to save the world. Eileen's like, how are you trying to save the world? He doesn't really get into the Pacific. But what he does say is that, well, while my family's going to be okay, I don't really know about the rest of the world. And Eileen's like, well, we'll, 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 like don't, don't worry. You, you'll be taken care of, you know, for your contributions. So don't worry. You're, you'll be fine. You know what that makes me think of? Okay, since I'm a comic book geek and a just comic book enthusiast in general, I think about Lex Luthor, you know, the original Christopher Reeve Superman, when he decided he wanted to make some sort of island or whatever, and some people was going to be safe, and the other people were just going to be, well, good luck. It makes me think about that. I mean, it wasn't that far long ago where they was to talk about freezing the world and stuff. So, I mean, <laughs> come on. It's, you know, it's not that far off from whatever comic book shenanigans I'm sitting there talking about. There is a point where he does look into it and he gets the coordinates and he's like, you portrayed it. Okay? These coordinates don't make a lot of sense. And I mean, it's like, what are you talking about? I didn't do any. I didn't do any of that. It could be something else. It could be your brother, the stand the third. It could be anyone. Um, and so he gets upset, right? This decoder that he has, he takes it out and he throws it on the floor. Because, you know, GH in his budget, you know, we we don't we don't break stuff, we just we just lightly flip over chairs. I'm angry. Beep. No, I am not letting that go. I'm not. Not when they're out, not when Dave's just sitting there breaking glasses and, and throwing cups and stuff like that. I'm not. No. Um, now, Eileen sees this and she's like, I want to sit there and try to get it to try to end this whole thing. And Anna does sit there and call her. Like, you know, you're out, you know, you're taking too much time. I need you to sit there and get yourself out. Well, I mean, Eileen's like, I want to stay. And I and you know Anna's like oh she's gonna blow she's gonna blow this whole thing or whatever. Now Anna and Vic, Anna and Valentine. The thing that I I sit there and take away from this scene is that you know after they talk about what they're gonna do after this whole thing is gone after this whole thing has you know after everything is done and said Victor's in jail or whatever what are they gonna do? You talk about their plans. And their plans include everything else except for being with each other, being with family and being with the kids and stuff like that. And then they talk about how, the, you know, Valentine's like, all right, you know, I want to sit there and try to make some time for us. 
I look at this whole thing, right? Now, it makes me wonder about the foundation of their relationship. Is it just built on this whole adrenaline thing? You know? I mean, the danger and stuff like that and them going from place to place and, you know, sneaking in some time to kind of get it in and stuff like that. The rush, the thrill. What is it going to be like without that danger element? You know, are they going to sit there and be the super couple that they are now, or is everything just going to fall flat? Let me sit there and think about that. And I, I'm pretty sure other Anna, yeah, I think Anna asked about that question, and Valentine tried to reassure her, and but it, it just makes me it just makes me wonder. Um, Dex was entirely pointless in this episode. Maxi. I feel like the writers just don't care anymore. I mean, now they're just making her this this walking commercial, this spokeswoman for the nurses' ball, you know. Joss and, and Dex are talking, and Max is like, "Oh, cool! I got both of you." Uh, Joss, you're gonna sing, right? You need to sing. I I, I want you to sing, and and Dex, yeah, you're gonna, you know, she didn't say it, but it's like, oh, you're gonna sit there and do the magic Milo thing because apparently, you know. Never consider the fact that he can sing or tap dance or tell jokes or anything like that. It's just nope, you look good, so you're gonna be you're gonna be a dancer. But don't worry, we're not gonna sit there and degrade you. Hey, just take a moment to get over that one. <sighs> then she goes in Kelly's, and then he talks a little bit, and he talk about Cam and. You know, Cam's warning to make sure that, you know, you don't hurt Jocelyn or X, Y, and Z is going to happen to you. And then um, Maxie comes back and um, Joss doesn't give an answer. And I guess it's to be continued until she decides to do it because, I don't know, reason. So I guess when she sings, people can sit there and let me know how she was because I'm not going to be bothered to listen to it. But I'm pretty sure she's going to be great from what people tell me. So I like the scene with Cam and Asme. I did. You know, Cam coming to the door and being like, hey, where are you going? And, you know, his thing, they both made some valid points in this whole scene. You know, Cam being like, listen, I get that you don't remember what you did, but just because you don't remember doesn't mean that the stuff you didn't did didn't matter and it didn't affect people. And while Esme has amnesia, she can't remember anything, and she's constantly keeping her guard up 24-7, you know, people being in the town, being Team Spencer, she doesn't feel like she knows who to trust. You know, Cam is like, listen, that, I, I get that, but you did stuff in this town to cause people to mistrust you. So I understand she has this whole, it's me and Ace against the world. And I get it from her perspective. You know, Cam is right where he's like, this stuff didn't come from a vacuum. You know, but I understand, I understand where, where, where Esme is coming from. I understand where Esme is coming from. And, you know, Cam talks about redemption and, and brings up Franco and stuff, which is her brother. Um... Redemption is possible if you if you want it if you if you if you want it you know and she can't get redeemed by just running away. But see, this is the problem with this whole trying to redeem Esme. We need a villain. We need we need a bad girl. Okay, as much as I did, as much as 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 Esme kind of annoyed me. You know, when she was a villain, when she was coming at Trina, when she was coming at Joss, it made the team story interesting. It made them interesting, to be honest. She really gave them some sort of a threat and stuff like that of what she was doing. She made it interesting. You know, she, during this whole Trina trial, we, we saw a lot of different aspects to her. You know, this trial really brung out you know, like, the fact that um, Trina was like, listen, I'm not going to sit there and try to throw you in jail, but if it comes down between me and you, 
I'm just saying, I ain't going to jail. You know, she has to then be real with herself. And that was brung on by Esme. See, I know a lot of people did not like this whole Trina going to jail, Trina being prosecuted and stuff like that. Um, for reasons that I'm just not going to get into. But it gave Trina something to do. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the story. And I felt like, I felt like in all reality, they were not going to keep Trina in jail. They might have put her in jail for a little bit, but they were going to keep her there. But because of optics, they decided not to do that. My point, my point is, that Esme gave them a lot to do. And so trying to redeem her and turn her into good or whatever just doesn't work for me. Now, granted, she can't be one note like now, and you can't just sit there and just be villain 24-7, but I feel like I'm, I, I liked her better as a villain. You know, even if she does get back her memories and she is somewhat of a villain, it will make it interesting. And make it interesting. So hopefully they go that route. Now they all get to the party and well Joss gets to the party, Trina gets to the party, Spencer gets to the party, and Joss apologized to Liz about, you know, hurting Cam and you know, Liz is like, nah, you know, listen, she's like, you know, y'all could be friends and it could be cool and whatever. So I'm rooting for that. Now, I find it kind of funny that you know, she can say that. Well, I want me and I want you and my son to sit there and be friends. But if she actually knew what Joss did as far as cheating on him, not just breaking up. Breaking up is very simple. You know, it happens all the time. This isn't breaking up. This is cheating and then treating him like a toilet seat. I'm pretty sure Liz would not have that same energy. She just wouldn't. But whatever. I don't think she's probably going to know. And if she does know, then I guess we're going to see how nice she's going to be to Joss moving forward. I doubt it. But, you know, for some odd reason, I feel like it's not going to change anything. And I'm going to be disappointed. And, well, you know what? It's not the first time GH actually disappointed me. So, you know, one of many, I guess. What else happened in this episode? I don't understand why Cam thought it was a good idea to bring Esme to his going away party. Now, maybe he wants to think, keep an eye on her. I don't know. But in all reality, why? You know, this is your going away party and you want to sit there and bring a person, a woman, into this room that makes everyone feel uncomfortable, angry, annoyed, and every other negative emotion that you can possibly sit there and think of. I don't understand it, but, you know, I guess they needed a little tension, otherwise it was going to be a boring scene, so... Okay, sure, whatever. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else that happened in this episode. But if I miss something like usual, I'll be doing a live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday, Saturdays and Sundays on the weekends for members only. If you are not a member, click the join button in the description box below. We have a lot of fun. Um, I'm always going to team. You have a great time as any person that is a member of my channel, and they will not steer you wrong. So I feel like that's pretty much it. I can't really think of anything else to happen. So with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Stay safe. And I will see you in the next video. In live stream.